do we need the power of belief in order for life to work? Do we need for things to make sense? Do we need to understand before life can live its potential? These are the questions that have been simmering in the field have been intuitively sensed and has inspired to share a perspective. As the third density body-mind world that we are very familiar with living as, the mind that is vibrating as the personal separate self, the mind that vibrates at a frequency and fragments the reality that which it is into two, simply an appearance to experience the flavors of this play, shifting the center from that which we are as life, as reality, to a personal self, and therefore putting the rest of us outside and playing the game of within and without. To live as a person primarily is to be unconscious of the true reality that which we are as consciousness. And therefore then, we play so that we can experience and taste what it means to live as a person outside in. Now, the experience of living this from Kali Yuga, of disempowerment as if life happens to me, we wake up to experiencing self-empowerment at the level of a person. Life happens for me. Or we may even say, life happens through me. And to note that still in this case, the primary identity is of the separate person. There is a gap, there is a separation, there is a distance between that which we see as life and that which we identify as the I am. Now I've created quite a few videos where I have kind of shared in detail about the dynamics of the third density body-mind world I am identity as a person which we are familiar with and the nuances of that so you can go ahead and watch some of the previous videos in case this is one of the first videos that you're watching. The third density body-mind world and that means that which we are familiar with the most living as a person. This is the center of the self, the I am the person, the body, around which the wheel of Maya takes place. This, as I've shared before, is the identity where consciousness, that which we are, manifested consciousness, Shakti, I am awareness, all-knowing, is limits itself vibrating at a gross level which at the level of energy we may say is the masculine dominant energetic frequency that causes the mind's vibration and frequency causes the level of awareness only to be at the gross level and therefore we sense the life that which we are only through this are five senses. Those are the masculine senses facing outwards. And then identified with the body because our experiences that we are aware as if only through the body. So then this becomes the me. 
what I see, what I taste, what I hear, what I smell, what I touch, is what is my reality, naturally so. Therefore, we live and experience, that's the third density experience, of a material world, tangible, an experience of physicality. And the masculine is also the thinking mind, thought is masculine, gross level. So we get identified with this psychological separate eye, simply an idea, right? Conditions that we have taken on from the environment that we've come in. And because, of course, awareness is always primary, no matter at what level or state of mind we may be vibrating at, our primary identity at every level first is the I am. And that is awareness. Because without awareness, nothing is possible. So awareness here, when the mind is vibrating at a gross level, gets identified one with this thinking idea, mind, which lives a past or a future. So it lives linear time, concepts. It lives as a concept. It never, even at this level, lives in the present always moving to its thought so we move as thought we move as condition as an idea as a belief that is why for the personal mind that is so identified with thought in the world of when we are vibrating pri predominantly, primarily as a person, the power of belief is everything. Because everything is energy. Right? The mind is vibration. And that vibration determines the level of awareness. As this separate self, we live linear time and space. As this separate self, we live only as a concept and therefore we need concepts. We take concepts from outside, values, morals. That is why we look outwards when we are seeking, as if there is a truth that is outside of us without realizing we are the power. We are the unnameable truth. Moving as this idea, we move as a condition, as a belief. And therefore, for a person that is unconsciously living, naturally, the power of belief is everything. When we are primarily identified and living as thought, as a concept, at that level, concepts are needed. And that is why at that level, the need and the power of even understanding a concept, because it's living by the concept, is important. That is why when we are identified as this thinking mind, all these things of what is good, what is bad, you know, to think positive, as I've shared before, you know, life that is moving, what is this thinking that is encouraged? Because when the mind is conditioned to see something in a way that is negative, what I mean by that is resisting life. We feel that dissonance, right? It's only because there is a thought that the energy that is evolving and moving, that which we are, clashes. And that resistance causes that feeling of dissonance. We feel limited. We may not be able to name it, but we know we constrict ourselves. This causes the confusion. So this is when the thought that we are living as and that we have unwittingly adopted is not aligned with the truth of that which we are. 
And that is why for us, when we are identified with the thinking mind, we say think positive. Think that, see how this is serving as well. Give life the most generous, largest, expansive meaning. Why? Because this thinking mind is an experience of giving meaning to life. Life itself, one may say, is meaningless. It is what it is. But living primarily as a person, it's an experience, right? We don't get to experience this consciousness that what it means to as if I am the cause. I get to give meaning. I get to do the hard work. So we play this illusion as if the person decides, makes a choice. I get to do this. I, you know, move according to this. And therefore, it starts with the I and because this whole dynamic of, of identification with the body is with birth and death, right? With the body. So everything has, I began this and this is how it ended. Right? I'm here and I go there. So it's all between that, these two points. And this is the I am playing duality. So that's why anything that this thinking mind plays with, if you look at it, it's, it's the dual parts. With its joy comes sadness with its ups comes the downs with its profit comes loss with its success comes failure as long as we are making meaning interpreting from this thought this linear thought please that's why the invitation depersonalize and see this as a phenomena it's simply a phenomena that allows consciousness that which we are that is everything to simply taste this way of being and doing. Third density, body, mind, world. Experiencing that which we are through this perspective as this time and space. Putting that which we are outside of ourselves as if I'm this body and then playing this game. Everything is consciousness and that's why even when we veil ourselves, right, that's why we play as avidya, ignorance. Unlike what it is commonly interpreted as, there is nothing going wrong. Ignorance allows us to taste and experience without which it is not possible for Shakti to be. And taste and sense these different states and ways of being and doing. This is pure play. Because nothing at the level of experience can touch or change us. Like the waters. The water that appears as a drop, as a ripple, freezes up to experience itself as tangible, hard, ice. But nothing changes the innate quality of the water itself. It's simply appearing in these forms. And again, that's why the paradox, at the relative level, it is that which is, it is appearing as. But only at the relative level, at the le level of illusion, appearance. When we hold the paradox, then that is living in our power. We don't get fooled by what is appearing. And we don't reject it. We don't deny it. We don't run away from it. We don't even at some level stand apart from it. We are one with it because we are aware. And then we can play with it, in it. This is the game. There is nothing at no level going wrong and that's why Shakti reminds that we not invalidate any state of mind that we are because every state of mind validly lives its own nature this ignorance is a conscious choice by that which we are at the level of consciousness So moving 
as this belief and thought. See the nature of this paradigm. So that's why every response, therefore, whatever is being, like, the, like I've shared before, the world is an amalgam of states of consciousness because there's nothing outside consciousness. Consciousness is experiencing itself as space, as a tree, as a plant, as a cloud, as many more things that this gross mind that we are identified with doesn't even see or know. So all there is, is consciousness, that which we are. And that's why disconnection is an impossibility. This separation that we see, that we live in, allows us to relate with as if another, as if an outer world. But at the reality of that which we are, there is no space, there is no distance, there is no separation. When we stand in that, live as that as our primary, then even at the level of appearance, we can play. In fact, that is consciously playing, consciously creating, co-creating. So see the natural phenomena. Right? This world is an amalgam of states of consciousness. When as the seeker, we are not aware and we move around looking outwards as if there is one truth, a guru or a teacher or somebody, natural phenomena, right? This body-mind is lived it. So when we do that, then we get confused because we are like, this says some, someone says something, someone says something. At the level of all of this, there's simply opinions. Opinions that are born out of their own state of mind that they are living. Every mind eventually only perceives, sees, interprets at the level of that which it is. Doesn't matter who or what it is. This is, this is something that is in one way so subtle, but it is so this thing. That's why we only experience ourselves even if there are two people experiencing in the same situation, what we see, the meaning making we do, what we take away, depends on the level of awareness we have and therefore our experience of that. Two people never experience a situation exactly the same way. It's the nature of mind. That's why the invitation, know thyself. So that's why states of consciousness, it's the key. That's why the invitation, begin from here. All we can do is begin from our deepest sense and move to what resonates to us. There is no truth as if an object that is outside of us, independent of us. The truth that which we are unknowable, no unnameable Shiva cannot be brought into our relative experience. The minute we bring it into form, it simply becomes a subjective perspective. That's why we got to own our self, our perspective, whether of ourself or of the world. Every mind is a colored lens, a state. And that's why this state is constantly evolving and changing. That's why in all my videos I always say that every mind that is sharing, that's why ratio, unique dynamic ratio of what is conscious and unconscious. Move from your own resonance. You know, what resonates to you? Resonance is key. And because, why? Because we are all consciousness. There is nothing that is being uttered here that is new that you don't already know and to be accurate that you don't, that you are not already. We are already that. That is what determines the resonance, right? We don't know how to name it. We don't know how to point at it, but we, there is a resonance. We know, even though the understanding mind does not understand. And that is why the invitation for the personal mind, which moves as thought naturally, this thought is of the known world. Its beliefs, what are its beliefs? Of the known world. 
naturally in that play all it can do is try to understand intellect's limit is only its own understanding which is fine and that is why philosophies are there especially when even when it comes to life which can never be understood right you cannot take this little tea cup of the intellect this little aperture and try to fit in the ocean of life through it only if i see it only if it makes sense to me only through the words action and doing then ah uh, i will believe it that is what i will see as reality can't do that life is more but when we are identified with a person that's why these many words are given philosophies but all these words are given for understanding only for one and only one purpose so that you see the nature of the mind that is demanding this and allows for surrender because life cannot be understood or lived as this thinking mind i've shared before this is a different dimension this is different thinking and knowing of this thinking mind and its beliefs is simply an interpretation meaning making it is not being life this is how we paint colors on life if our conditioning has been fairly the kind that aligns with life then we experience life at the positive level we are still identified with thought as thought if it is conditioned in any other way then our experience of life life continues but our experience of life is colored then in a way that it limits us constricts us so that is when concepts are given and are very helpful for the seeking mind so for this state of mind that is questioning right the knowing mind this thinking mind always questions because it doesn't meet reality for it the reality is unknown it feels uncertain it lives in its secure world of its own knowing its own meaning making so for this uh paradigm this state of mind that questions naturally the answers are given as concepts but all concepts in service of surrender what happens when we let go of the thinking mind we are we meet life right where it is we don't need to give it any meaning we move as that and that is why for the question does do we need the power of belief it depends on the state of consciousness that is asking and if it is generally asking that means it is living as concepts and that's why to be able to hold the paradox i also want to name something about this third density personal mind that we live as the ideas that we live as the beliefs that we live as the knowing of this thinking mind is only of the world so even when we hold the highest idea highest most expansive belief and the, let's say the deepest understanding we say yes we get it it is only limited this thinking can only understand in the framework of that which it is it does not understand life and life cannot be understood it takes whatever is through its own interpretation and understands it in its own language and therefore living as a thinking when we do personal visualization and and we do all of that it's wonderful for the personal mind very helpful but only till the point because it has a glass ceiling we cannot believe right thinking we cannot think something when we say we are thinking 
that thinking cannot think anything that is outside of it its thinking no matter how expansive its thinking comes from its own knowing see every mind that's why lives its own nature it cannot think outside the box that's why it plays its its own solutions that's why come from its own thinking and that is why it simply recreates the same paradigm and right now what we are going through that's why is a paradigm shift the thinking mind that created is the problem in the sense that is experiencing his world cannot create a truly a new world for that the nature of the mind needs to be looked at and that's why the new paradigm until the mind lives is the new paradigm it cannot create live or experience a new world self or world so that is why the invitation that's why that while understanding is very helpful beliefs are helpful it only comes to the point meets us to that door where we need to surrender we need to know the limitations and not insist on understanding before we can at some level know that there is more to that which we are in life when we surrender and that means we do not pick thought unless of course for the playground that it plays in the known world and we move we are open to moving life then we are truly open and we meet life where it is without meeting another or our world or our self as a past as a condition we then really are with what is that's why i am awareness the paradigm of true self self realization is a flip i am the power awareness everything is happening in and as me this is radical allowance of the life that is me i am life and the personal mind does not know this because it says how will i make decisions how will i choose right so naturally for the personal mind that is the doer there is an insistent insistence on understanding because without that it naturally we feel how can we make choices it's only upon understanding will i be able to evolve because it thinks it is the cause because it doesn't know the innate intelligence that it is that flows without thinking it, we needn't think to make the decision this is a longer route right this is simply for play when we are here in the moment completely open aware presence that's why is the power it's innate intelligence we are it cannot be put in a concept intuition the feminine is the source we've been living as the masculine dominant world body mind world here i shared this before that's why overthinking intellectualizing we live only here as albert einstein said you know when this becomes the master we will find ourselves suffering confused all true solutions true seeing being arises from awareness that which we are and the source at the manifested consciousness one stream the source is the feminine that's why we invite come into the body at the level of manifested consciousness mind everything is mind there are many perspectives to see this at this point i'm taking one perspective which is even at the level of the body feminine intuition is in the gut we feel it in our body but most of the time we are cut off the minute we meet life we meet it from here we meet another from here we see life from here we try to solve from here that is why we have so much and so many of the diseases disease right so many of the diseases are from here headaches anxiety what is anxiety living as thought in the future this is living 
as presence, here, awareness, flowing, completely different. Intuition is here. The feminine is the source. And I've shared this before. How does this happen? The minute, it's all energy vibration. It's a phenomena. Here, the minute we go here, masculine energy constricts. We become our own obstacle. Gross level sensing. The minute we let go, we relax. The vibratory frequency relaxes. In that we evolve. So actually simply that's why to be stiram, sukham, asanam, be still and know I am God. This, is, this feels so counterintuitive, right, to our personal doing mind. That is the doer thinks it's the cause. What do you mean? How can being allow for any kind of understanding or deeper doing? And yet that is the way, the way that which we are. State of being is everything. And all that is required of us, that's why, is what we already are. Awareness, being. When we are being, right, because see, belief, understanding is all at this level. Thinking. It cannot serve beyond a point. It's the dissolution of this thinking that allows for being. We cannot bring the thinking mind into being. That's a different dimension. That is why all these words, all of this, are only pointers. They can only come that far, can bring the understanding of this knowledge, all these words that are shared, only in service to bring you to the point so this nature of mind realizes, dang, I am the obstacle. I'm done playing with that. That allows me to play beautifully. I can make meaning be making nothing wrong with it. It's a delicious way of experiencing that which I am. As if I make meaning. Creativity, right? But when it comes to life, now that I'm seeking, I shared this in my seeking video, a natural overflow. Being. That which I am as a thinking mind cannot come here. So surrender. That's why all the practices, right, they are all for the thinking mind. All bringing us only here. Being. And in being, there is no insistence for any kind of understanding. We see the nature of that, what is happening. Awareness is like the sun. When we are identified with the clouds, that's the thinking mind that comes and goes. Then we play as doubt. We live as doubt. We are doubt. We ask for understanding and then understanding comes and understanding goes. And we chase that. When we are awareness, it does not matter whether the mind gets it or not. We realize we are, we are, we are Vidya. This play of ignorance is only at the level of thought. And I am not thought. So whether my thought is that at the level of thought I have understood or not, does not change anything about that which I am. So then that grasping to understand is not there. I want to share a little bit from my experience as a seeker. You know, I'd sit and naturally for us as a seeker, we read books, I would be with some teachers, gurus, and I'd be like, that is what I want. And a deep desire to understand. But eventually realized that can only take me that far. And in surrendering a deeper state of consciousness, Right? We have experienced this. Have you read a book where you've read a book 
and then we, un- we, we think we get it, we understand what the author is writing. And then maybe a year later, we go back to the same book. This happened with me for Eckhart Tolle's uh, A New Earth. I go back and I'm like, I don't know what I read the first time, but it was like reading the book again. What changed? Simply the state of consciousness. I saw deeper. And that is why I, I want to name this because even here, as I share these videos, the thinking mind that is trying to understand at the level of words will come later and think it is understanding something. Of course, understanding at the level of that which it is. But when we know we are consciousness, timeless, There is much more happening here. Because consciousness has no space, has no distance. That is why everything meets us perfectly. If you're watching this video or coming across, whatever you're exploring, anyhow, through books, through life, because all is life, it's meeting us. And everything is ever changing at the subtler levels. But when we are dancing at the gross level of thought, action and doing, words we think that's the only way we can take in stuff and that is going to determine evolution and life just be there is so much life is much more than what the gross level mind and its senses and its ways of being and doing can ever understand At the subtler level, there is much transpiring here. It looks like there is a question and answer. There are people. This field, the field. And each of the perceived bodies are touched by this field. Each one of us that asks a question, asks as consciousness for all of us, each one of us that arises and arrives perceivably, to a deeper sense of knowing that which we are is a living presence that adds to this field. At the subtler level, there's a lot more going on. So while at the level of mind, we may walk away, you know, after watching something or reading something, saying that, hmm, you know, I got it, which is true, right? At many different levels, this is happening. So at the level of what the gross mind gets, it's true, it's understanding, but there's a lot more. That's the resonance. We have taken away a lot more. I remember, you know, when I was in the seeking journey, reading uh, Jitu Krishnamurti's book and could not get past three pages, I think. (laughs) Just did not make any sense, even though At a deeper level, I could sense what he was pointing to. And I really, really, as the mind, thinking mind, wanted to understand. I just could not understand. Even when I I surrendered and the channeling and a lot of writings that came through from the higher self and were shared, I received the same feedback. I do not understand. I get, Supriya, what you're writing, what you're sharing, but I don't understand. And this is in response to that, that just be. That's why the invitation to come in as a beginner Zen's state of mind. You are consciousness. We are consciousness. Yes, what will be understood, let's celebrate that at the level of the thinking mind. Need not deny that. But to also hold at the same time that there is a lot more that is being imbibed in one sense because we are already it. So no need to be grasping or believing only that which is understood by the thinking mind. Not to limit ourselves, our identity. That only if it's understood by my thinking mind that I've got it. And that's why I said as at the level of awareness, this is pure liberation, you know. The mind goes through ups and downs, these thinking minds, its emotions. One day it feels great, wonderful, it got it. One day it feels like, shit, did I even get any of this? But when we are as awareness, 
we see the nature of this mind that dances all of these the clouds come and go but we that which we are this eternal sun always is its primary without awareness even the perceiving of this mind that comes and goes interprets wouldn't be there and that's why the more and more we stand as awareness right that's why be aware wherever we are this aspect of us grows the sun we can see the nature of the clouds and soon enough even at the level of time space one one may put it this way this is simply the language is set in duality the clouds thin right that is the masculine way of seeing and being relaxes and that which we are eternally already are we see that i am awareness i was simply identified as if i was the thinking mind i was playing as that this is the exciting thing like we're going through at this point so yes depending on where that's why these are two different paradigms for the paradigm that is the person naturally it will resonate power of belief is very very key thinking matters because the thought right naturally determines the vibration an open expansive thought we naturally the mind vibrates we are at ease right and that allows for deeper seeing increased level of awareness see another thing that i want to share is that somebody else has shared how do i raise my frequency then how do i change right the personal mind always thinks it has to do it's the other way around ultimate doing is the undoing we cannot raise as it do our frequency change our state of mind it happens how does it happen when we simply are aware relaxed at ease that's why radical acceptance of where we are when we truly accept this overthinking stops all of this trying doing figuring out strategizing planning stops we truly relax awareness that's why i want to share also that's why at the level of the body feminine is full bodied embodied awareness see when we come into the world there is attention focus and narrowing this allows us to play as attention as the masculine world it is a tapering it's a focusing bringing the energy to the to the brain to the top part as if we are focusing to do something but when we think we are the doer we get stuck here we are constantly vigilant and therefore here the only time we relax is when we sleep thank god for that the more we are here eventually it's tiring it's disease this is what causes the unease we are ease but when we know we are life embodied feminine masculine integrated intuition is the source first co-creative power if you're doing something with the world masculine intellect comes in later co-creative activity we radiate from our heart this is it so we are not stuck here as attention focus that's why even spiritual practices that overly have us here doing this don't serve all practices eventually have to lead us to this the space awareness ease naturally the vibration loosens and in this loosening right everything is frequency this determines the level of awareness we deeply sense nothing changes in our situation our job our relationship we are struggling with or the way we see the world whatever nothing changes on the outer but now the state of mind is vibrating open now we deeply sense beyond the facade the thin facade that the gross level mind 
was interpreting and seeing the other or the world or the self as. We see behind the curtain. We see behind the facade, behind the words. We sense behind and that's what's the invitation here. That's why to begin, always say begin with, and I, and I put the body centering video, that's why. Sense into this from the deepest self. Stay open. There is a lot more transpiring here. Don't insist that your mind needs to understand. You limit. Let go. You are consciousness. Stand in that space. Trust your own pace and knowing above all. That is why for the personal mind, faith, trust are key. You cannot, we cannot fail at this. We cannot get it wrong. We cannot miss. That is why I wake up to the narratives of the world that rush. Kali, that plays as time and space, reminds us, I play as every time, every condition, every state of mind. Every flavor of time and space, yuga is me. I create time and space. It is not outside of me. So waking up in and as Kali, Kala, is to know that. I don't need to fit myself into as if time and space and this world are above me, outside of me. I create it. And this allows us to move as innate intelligence, as integralness. Every moment is perfect for wherever it is we may find ourselves and for whatever that is present. Can we trust that? Can we trust that at every level of understanding, whether it is at the level of the thinking mind, or at the deeper sense that we might yet not know that we are consciousness and everything is transpiring perfectly. That is why the thinking mind that sees chaos does not understand the divine order that I am. Allow this journey to be a joyful, playful, easeful one holding also that when it is not that is fine as well being okay with everything everything moving to and as the love joy and peace that which we are even when the thinking mind Maybe in a flux that does not feel like love, does not feel like joy, does not feel peaceful at all. But we see that, the mind that dances. So that is why what changes in that sense from this perspective is not us. It's that state of mind. That which I am is awareness that observes and witnesses this. And all phenomena ultimately is the I am appearing as mind, states of mind. So if we understand, we say our thinking mind understands, celebrate that understanding. You know, for me, as I started sharing this, in the beginning there was a lot of things, that's why like, do I change the way the world do I need to do this? Why the personal mind was present and naturally the desire that it be understood what has touched this body-mind and transformed naturally overflows as a joy to be offered to its world. But when we live as the true self, there is no insistence because we are living as life and life we know lives at every level, every state of consciousness is life living. There is no insistence that this be understood because it's already happening. That is why there is no insistence to try and fix or change this way of sharing the true self 
is not in order to change or fix or do anything at all. It is not shared for another person at all. This simply is a loving that arises as an offering. The same one divine that forgets, awakens herself. This expression, that's why, is simply a loving that it offers. We only give to our own selves. Whatever that is perceived that we give to others. There is one consciousness, one divine living. So when the true self is, it flows, it knows that what flows perfectly touches who and what it needs to touch. There is no need to plan, strategize, change anything. This is pure playing. To living and celebrating an awakened body, mind, world. Swadharma, every swa, self, I am, is, lives, experiences, expresses its own dharma. Swatantra, freedom, liberation, every swa, self, is its own mechanism, tantra, that determines the level of freedom that it experiences. That is its own I am identity. Sarva Mangalam Shakti reminds at every level, at every state, every way of being, every flavor of time, space, yuga, I am blessed auspiciousness. Much love. Have a beautiful day.